we've got four things to talk about, two uh, bits of transfer speculation. And the first one is from the ever-reliable court offside. <laughs> and uh, they say Tottenham, Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain are leading the race to sign Victor Jokeres from Sporting Lisbon. Are we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to spend 100 million on him and 65 on Solanke. No chance. I mean, maybe if we get a good deal for Richarlison, and I mean, there's, if they have money to spare, but even then, I don't see us going for Jokeres. So I think the fact we've gone for Solanke has killed any chance we'd ever get Jokeres, I would say. Yeah, he's started the season on fire, though, hasn't he? he? Has. Um, he's been a Champions League, he's been amazing. In the, in the league, he's got goal contributions galore. It looks like he's even taking up a level. So. This guy, Jokeres, he's destined for the top, in my opinion. I think he's going to get a massive move in the summer, yeah, uh, next summer. I wouldn't be surprised. He looks very good. But we've got Big Dom, so who needs him? Yeah, I would take him. Who needs him? <laughs> I would take who him. Who needs him? Um, give me sports. Say that t uh, Newcastle, Tottenham, Man United are all chasing Lille midfielder Angel Gomez uh, with a 24-year-old out of contract in the summer. And I, I can actually see this one being something that Spurs would pursue. Um, you know, obviously out of contract, so there's a Bosman ruling there. And I really enjoyed his performance for England uh, when he was called up last last month. He did get sent off in, in Champions League over midweek. Oh, did he? Yeah, I didn't see that. Cards. Um, I think he's a good little player. Um, I think he, would he suit Angeball? I think probably. I think he's a good technical player. He's good in these tight spaces. Um, what would he be? Probably number eight. I don't see him as a attacking player, though. Maybe a, maybe he can be um, trained to be a bit more of a number six, a potentially. Yeah. I think so. Uh, but I don't know if he'd be my first choice as number six, that's mm -hmm. all. It's interesting, though, because like no one's been talking about him, and then out of the blue, he gets called up to England under Lee Carsley, which, and then he puts in a really good display for England. Look, the opposition wasn't very good. We've got, that's got to be said. But I think that he's obviously uh, having a really good time of it if uh, he's getting called up for England. Yeah, and uh, Lee Carsley knows him well, so fair play to him um, for for trusting in a player that you, you really believe in even if people don't uh, give him a chance so I, I like that trajectory and I know that uh, Ange loves players who have kind of you know people be, people have written him off and all that kind of stuff and then um, they've battled their way back to you know become yeah. uh, for form and uh, battlers and though Solanke's a similar one people wrote him off many times and now look at him um, you know doing well big moves to Spurs and doing well so um, I wouldn't be surprised if Ange looks at Angel Gomez and that's the, and he thinks that's the kind of character I want. To yeah, hundred percent. Uh, so let us know in the comment section below. Would you like to see Spurs for move? Would you like to see Spurs move for Angel Gomez this summer? He will be on a free transfer at the end of his contract at Lille. And last but not uh, two more in terms of the Spurs squad. Wilson Odebel, equip say that Wilson Odebel is expected to return in mid October, so about a month away uh, from him returning, which is positive news. Yeah, because I thought um, it was going to be longer than that. Well, ham it didn't seem like a serious hamstring injury, but it was amp, so that'll be a month out. It's not great, but it could be, yeah, at least it wasn't a tear, so it could have been worse. Yeah, because when And said like he's going to be out for a significant amount of time, I thought it was like going to be a really bad hamstring tear, like two, three months. I think when And uses the word significant, I don't think he means like significant in the terms of like that means it's going to be months. I think he means like... Because usually an injury can be like, oh, he's going to be out for a game. That's nothing. It's not too big a deal. Mm. But significant is like, oh, he's out for a month, which is a significant injury. Mm. So, hope thankfully it's not too bad. But still, um, um, you know, mid October is still going to miss a lot of football. So yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, soon after the next international break, hopefully he'll be back. And last but not least, Alistair Gold in his video this morning says that uh, Vicario, a big presence behind the scenes as well as on the pitch. The 27-year-old Italian was added to the team's leadership group this summer to become the fourth member with Sonny, Madison and Romero. Uh, with the players looking to Vicario as one of the key voices among them, it means Postacoglu has an established leader in every line of the team. So obviously Vicario in goal, Romero in defence, Madison in midfield and Sonny in the front line. Mm. Yeah, I, I do find that quite interesting uh, because obviously he's a, I know Madison's a new player, but Vicario, uh, Madison's obviously a known player in the Premier League. Played played for England. He you know was in the Premier League for a long time. Was known as one of the better players in the Premier League. So him joining the leadership group makes a lot of sense. Obviously, Vicario was a bit more of an unknown player before he joined Tottenham. So the fact that he's established himself as, so, as such a a high place in the group and respected part that they felt the need to put him into the leadership group is really interesting. Well, we, obviously, I remember reading articles about him before he joined Tottenham about his character and what a good character he is, and he's a really like really good person and stuff. Like I remember they were saying when 
the Ukraine war happened, that he took refugees uh, to stay at his house and stuff like that. So this is a guy of good moral standing character. So it's a good person to have in the leadership group. So um, the fact that they've decided to do that is um, an, an interesting step. But I'm happy about it. Yeah, uh, he just got to cut all the crazy things out of his game. Because if he does do that, then you're talking about a very solid keeper. Um, but there are a few question marks in terms of you know, his coming for the crosses. Is he strong enough? Can he get stronger? Uh, maybe his inability to sometimes come for crosses in general. And then, um, you know, the, the the silly things that we saw in the game yesterday. He just needs to kind of improve on the uh, physical aspect of goalkeeping and also just cut the silly things out of his game. What about him as part of the leadership group? I like that. I like that because you can see that he's got authority in that team. You can see that, you know, he's uh, always kind of acting as a leader on that football pitch. So I have no doubt that he's got influence in the dressing room. Yeah, it looks like. And also, you could, even though he's only, what, 28 or 27, 28, he's still, that's still actually one of the older members at this point because we've and got it, a very young team. And it kind of plays into what you were saying as well in terms of and likes where players come from and their story. And, and Vicario's got a great story in terms of, you know, he's a late bloomer and he's had to work really hard to, to get to where he's been. Like it was only last two years ago, he was at Empoli and that was the kind of biggest team that he's been at. And like, they're just like, you know, not, not, uh, not to disrespect, but not the greatest team in Italy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah, there you have it. That is your Tottenham update.